it was like some part of my life, it was just like something missing. And we just, you know, we kind of like, she was sending me pictures of us. I was sending up pictures of Reminiscing. <laughs> Reminiscing. So I mean, this is like, this is what we were doing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> secretly. <laughs> because during that time, during that I was time, with somebody was else somebody and he and was, was with somebody, somebody else. else. So you tell me y'all was cheating on y'all people with each other. We were cheating, but y'all we were reminiscing. Cheating. Y'all, y'all was mostly cheating. Yeah. I'm not happy over here. You're not, not happy, happy over, over there. there. What are we doing? Love is a treasure chest, but once opened, our hearts become vulnerable. I, I went back to Vegas. It was this guy. He appeared as a friend. Sure enough, it led to infidelity. Alignment can't be ignored. We talked about certain topics as far as having kids. She didn't want to have kids. Um, and that was one of the red flags. And I know you desire marriage. So I think it's best you move on with your life. What you do, Lisa? What you do? I told him, okay. <laughs> she didn't ask me why. <laughs> I knew several other women's bodies better than I knew my own. I've, I watched their videos of them having sex, so I would try to imitate that. No discussion is off limits. Dear Future Wifey Podcast brings healing. You inspire us to try God a little bit more. Uh, through this platform, I have realized that it's possible. It's possible to love again. The conversations have really helped me to change my perspective on relationships. Season 7 is all about tough topics. I'm Latarius R. Winfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latarius R. Whitfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. This is season seven. We're about one episode left from concluding this Tough Topics season. And we touched on a whole lot of stuff, and y'all been rocking with us. This episode is going to be pretty powerful. Um, yeah, we got some friends on the podcast today, and we always talk about keeping it lit. The mantra of the podcast is we keep it lit. We live intentionally and transparently, and this is going to be one of those episodes. I know you've seen in these social media streets of people spinning the block. You got Nelly and Ashanti back together. Well, today, welcome to Dear Future Wifey Podcast, my homies, Harriet and Marcus Speed. How y'all doing? Hey, how are you? <laughs> Now we in this thing. Yeah, we we in this thing. So let me tell y'all something. Speeds, I was like, I, I knew, uh, I talked to Harriet when she left. Y'all were going through a divorce, and I saw her relocate to Atlanta. And then I see her, I look on social media, y'all back together. And I'm like, what in the world just happened? So did y'all actually get a divorce, or how far did it go? We did. Yeah, we did. We, we found. Finalized. Yeah, I mean, it was final. And y'all got a divorce. So when was the divorce uh, final? It was That's June weird. the 8th of last year, June the 8th of 2022, which was the day after our 10th anniversary. Hold June, on. Well, we got married on June 7th. We got married June 7th. <laughs> y'all got married June the 7th, and then June the 8th, your divorce was finalized. Yes. yes. 10 years after y'all Ten said years. I do. Yes. yes. Y'all said I don't. Yes. Yeah. And then how long have y'all been separated and then come back together? How long was that separation? Well, about a year. A year, maybe a, a year months. and three months. Yeah. A year and three yeah, months. A little over a year. And then what brought y'all back together? So when I came back, I moved, we got, we separated, got a divorce. I moved to Atlanta. I moved back to help my oldest daughter. She was having some trouble financially. Um, so I came back to help her, you know, get back on the right track or whatever. And what happened with us? We went to dinner one day. What happened, Marcus? You, you tried to holler at her? <laughs> Marcus I mean, said, what's I'm, up? I'm going to be honest. We, we just, uh, I don't know. It was just like the. Uh, so y'all were still in communication in that year? I mean, we got kids together. Yeah. So we, we got we, two we, smart you know, kids so together. We, so we kept in communication or whatever. But uh, I don't know. It was, you know, it was like. Some part of my life, it was just like something missing. And, and and you could tell the same thing was kind of going on with her. And we just, you know, we kind of like, she was sending me pictures of us. I was sending up pictures of Reminiscing. Us. <laughs> Reminiscing. So this, I mean, this is like, this is what we were doing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> secretly. 
Cause because during that time, during that I was time, with somebody else somebody and he was, was with somebody, somebody else. else. So you tell me y'all was cheating on y'all people with each other. We were cheating, but y'all we were cheating. Y'all reminiscing. Y'all, y'all was emotionally cheating. Yeah. Yeah. Cheating they, is they, cheating. They cheating made... is cheating. Text message yeah, to yeah, me yeah, is cheating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we, we were cheating. We were cheating. <laughs> yeah. And so y'all here reminiscing. Yeah. We reminiscing. We were reminiscing and... And we went out to eat, and one thing led to another. And next thing you know, we was just like, move these people out the way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, pretty much that's been, that's exactly what happened. Well, that's, that's pretty exactly much how it went down. It was like, you know, like, look, we faked it. This ain't even what it, what it is. I'm not happy over here. You're I'm not, not happy, happy over, over there. Here. What are we doing? Yeah, like, we faked it. Like, so, Mark, <laughs> let me ask you this. As a man, what was missing with... Uh, Comparatively speaking, man, you know, uh, everybody don't honest. do the. Oh yeah, everybody don't do the same thing for you. Mm -hmm. You know, as a man, you're gonna be a man, right? Regardless. You know, what does that know? mean? I want people to understand what that means. <laughs> I'm saying like you're gonna take care of your family, you're right? Take care of your kids, you're gonna take care of your business or whatever. But sometimes, even in the motion of being a man, you kind of like mess out stuff, and you need that person that kind of make you better. That kind of can take like, okay, you doing this, you got this, you know. I could turn this into this, right? And that's kind of what she is. She like, I got the ingredients, but she know how to put the ingredients together, and boom, you know what I'm saying? Like she make me, I'm a better person when I'm with her and my kids and my family. I'm a, I am, I'm, be, I am, I am, I'm a better person. So Harriet, what was lacking from you? Everything. <laughs> everything i mean i just i missed him that year was like that year was the worst year of my life that we were separated Same it here. was it was really hard it's just yeah. like i missed everything just simple things getting a flat tire knowing he's gonna come run and pulling up on two wheels you know <laughs> seriously yeah. i call him no matter what time oh where you at bye bye he's there you know what i'm saying before the tow trucks just little stuff like that and it's just i just missed all of that i missed him i missed our daily routine i just i missed everything so we're together like even now we together every day uh we work together you know what i mean we yeah live together we like it was I can't, I mean, like, I ain't gonna lie, if we not together, it's like you, you know, you like, mm -hmm. you got a whack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So y'all are not just back together, y'all have gotten engaged again, correct? Yeah. We have. And when, did you, when, when did you propose to her? I have an official propose. I did, I gave her a ring. Right. I got on my knees, I proposed. It was just it's us at Papa Dose. It was just us Why you say it's not official then? <laughs> no, because, you know, she wanted to, you know, you I, wanted, wanted, I wanted, like, my dream was, like, to, no, I had intentions. Well, don't say it, because okay. if you say it, it might not. It won't be a surprise. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 so you have a different you proposal yeah, in mind. I want, yeah, I want to okay. get one this time. <laughs> okay, you know? so you want a different one. But uh, I want to go ahead and lock her down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were playing these games, wasn't you? Yeah, I want to go and lock her down. <laughs> Was that necessary here for him to go to that next level and pr actually propose? To me, it wasn't necessary. If it's, you know, it, clearly it was something he wanted to do, so he did it or whatever, but... It's like we've been together so long. I don't care about a wedding. He like, do you want a wedding? I don't. I don't want to spend all that money. You know, yeah. we've been together this long. We know we love each other. We don't need to put on a show for people. You know, let's take that money and buy another building, another yeah. business, or do something like that. So for me, it wasn't necessary, but I love it. <laughs> He's like, thank you. <laughs> I'm thankful. So, so are y'all going to have a wedding? I don't know. I mean, whatever she wants. All right, because clearly says you don't want it. Probably just a reception. Oh, yeah, so I'm just, just a yeah. reception. Or oh, just throw a party. A party. See, that's yeah. the thing about me and her. Like, I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just be like, whatever you know. Yeah, whatever she want. <laughs> whatever she want. Yeah, whatever she want to do. Let's rewind the hands of time and okay. let people know how y'all got here. Um, mm -hmm. How did y'all meet? So, um, we knew of each other, yeah. like, just in the streets, passing, uh, growing up in our mm -hmm. 20s. But, how we actually met, and we're being totally transparent. Yeah. Yeah. I just came home from prison. Mm -hmm. 
And I was up. See, see Harriet went to, sco- uh, went to school with me. She was in high school with me. Now, Harriet was a girl. Well, she was one of the, the women. I don't know if you know this, Marcus, but she was one of the girls that all the guys liked. You know what I'm saying? She was, she was, she was the baddie at the school. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. He said, I know, I know firsthand. Yeah. And, so, and, so, and so that's what the story was. And then shortly after high school, how many years after high school did you go to jail? Mm, maybe 10, maybe 10 years. It was that long after yeah, high school? Yeah, it was that long. Latir's wasn't that bad now. Well, I don't know. I, you know, not- the time was going by fast. So you tell me no. it's about 28 or no, something? No, it was, yeah, it was 10 years. Okay, so 10 years, you go to jail, and um, you went to jail for what? I went to jail a few times. So the first time, <laughs> me too. identity he theft. Me too. Identity theft, and I've been a couple of times. So when I say I met him after I got out, was my last time getting out, my very, very last time getting out. Yeah, and then, so you met him how? So, I sent him a friend request, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I came out, I don't know anything about Facebook. So they were like, you know, you just invite people. And I seen his name. I was like, oh, I remember him. You know, sent him a friend request. And one night, I seen he was selling cars. So I messaged him one night, and I was like, my friend's looking for a car. Can you send me your number, blah, blah. So he's flirting. And he's like, yeah, here's my number, and make sure you use it, too. That's not flirting. <laughs> what is that, Latte? What you call he it? He shot his shot. I shot my shot. He yeah, shot, shot his shot, shot. And I called it. And here we are. <laughs> and, and, and here we are. So, ladies, answer the, the DMs. DMs. <laughs> Do not answer the DMs, okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> and so you said you've been to jail a few times as well. Yeah, I went to prison. You went yeah. to prison. Yeah. And so how long How long was the longest? You only went one time? Was it yeah, one time? Yeah, that's all it took. Yeah. Says, oh, it took. Yeah, I went to and how long was time. that stint? It was just what seventeen months. Oh, seventeen months. And what was that for? For uh, possession of marijuana. Oh, okay, marijuana. And how long was your your, mm-hmm. your longest stint? Mine was three years. The last time that I went to prison, TDC was three years. So it was three years. Yes. So when did y'all meet each other? Shortly after y'all both got out. No, I had been out. Cause we been went oh wait, I had been out about three years now when I met her. Yeah, I was fresh out. <laughs> fresh, fresh, out. fresh out, literally. Fresh I out. might have been home maybe four months, five months when I met him. Yeah. And then when I met him, after our first date, we've never been apart. Really? Ever. So what was it about that first date? <sighs> it was the mm-hmm. conversation for me. Mm-hmm. It was the conversation and... Mind you, though, we both were broke. Okay. But, so y'all both but, broke. But Both broke. But, don't be honest with you. I didn't know how she was. She know how I was. But we both know who we are, though. You from, the I mean? from the past. You know, <laughs> also, y'all knew each other before. Street. No, I'm saying like she are, knew. Are you talking about, you know, recognizing the, like, yeah, yeah you from the, you from the street, yeah. I'm from the street. We, right, right, yeah. yeah. Right. We both and we both have been up, down, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, at, so y'all the time, knew though, right. at the time, we was both down. Yeah. We didn't have five you know, I was really waiting <laughs> to go. <laughs> when I met her, I was really waiting to go back to prison. You was waiting? Yeah, I thought I was, but I didn't. <laughs> what are you saying? Thank you God. Was I, think I got blessed. <laughs> it was blessed. <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> when you say, Marcus, you was waiting to go back, you like, yeah, well, they're going to pick me up in time now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's what it was, though. You know? And so you said that y'all were down. What was y'all first date? We hear all this nonsense about Cheesecake Factory dates and all that type of well, stuff. We met a Kenya today. Yeah, it was at Kenyatta's house. So y'all met somebody's lot. house yeah. in, in the parking lot. In the parking lot. We were right. sitting in the car. Yeah, and that was our first that date. That was our first date. I love it. I absolutely mm-hmm. love it. <laughs> I love it. Day. I love just it. Talk, Keep it simple. Just, just talking about our dreams and What goals. dreams did you have at that time, Marcus? At the time, what I wanted to do, some high shots. And yeah. Some <laughs> he some was on shots. the high shots. Yeah, and I wanted to open beauty shops. And that's what we did. Event, I mean, that's what we did. Like, the next year, we ended up doing that. I got mm-hmm. me a truck and trailer. And so, yeah, I got a beauty shop before I got the truck and trailer. And... We done did it. all kind of business. Yeah, I know. We're going to get to all them different business y'all did yeah. since then. And Harriet used to make all the hairstylists in Dallas mad because she used to do $50 sew-ins. Yes. And she used to do my daughter's hair. $50 sew-ins. Why did you do that? And how did you make so much money doing that for $50? The $50 sew-ins. So this is another thing. When I got out of prison, I went and worked at my friend Benicia's uh, beauty salon. And then another friend of ours that we grew up with, Jamila Camp, she yeah. came in one day to get her hair done, and she whipped open her laptop. She was like, Harry, let me show you what they're doing in Atlanta. I said, oh, let me take a look. 
And um, she showed me it was somebody who had a fifty dollar sewing shop, and that's that's it. She didn't need to show me <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> the numbers start going, everything just started going in my head. So, um, his sister, my sister in law, she was doing lashes. So me and her, we decided to get our own shop and fifty dollar sew-ins. I was doing it myself. And I had so many people. Yep. I had so many people waiting to get in. Like yep. my inbox, mm-hmm. 50, 100 people. Yep. We hired, what, 10 people, 10, yep. 15 people yep. just to yep. be able to handle all the people that I couldn't handle. Yep. Mm-hmm. And this was $50 so ends. And so how much would you make a week? A week, I'm going to say maybe three, $4,000. About three mm-hmm. or 4000 God damn. Yeah. I mean, I could do, and I'm not bragging, because I don't even do uh, hair anymore, yeah. but I could do a saw in 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Flat. <laughs> no I, you, you, you forgot. I know. You used to do my yeah. dogs. I was I like, know. how is she doing this? Yes. Hairstylist was so they mad was at so you. so mad. Yeah. So mad. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Why do you think they were so mad? Because when I came out... The average price for a sewing was about $150, yep. $200. So you come, you do good work, you're charging less than me. Of course the people are going to go to you. <laughs> and I lose my people, so they're mad. Yep. You was making three, $4,000. That means you was mm-hmm. doing hair. What was a normal work day for you? It varied during the week, but on the weekends, every morning I started at 6 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And, and that when? Shoot. I don't know, but I did a person like every hour. Every hour. I'm serious. I had a six, mm-hmm. seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three. I might have left maybe by five o'clock, five or six, I might have took my last one. And at one point yeah. you ended up having like what, three salons? Yes, mm-hmm. we did. We had some in Lancaster, um, Arlington. We had two in Arlington, mm-hmm. Dallas, and now my sister in law, she has one in DeSoto. She's still there at DeSoto on Polk. She ain't doing no $50 sewings, though. Is yeah, they're still doing mm-hmm. $50 sewings. Still $50? Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, they have things that are higher than $50, I know, but, 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 but let's add on they have, now. yeah, they have the basic things. Yeah, inflation $50. kind of took it up. <laughs> it should be yeah. $100 sewings. For real? Yeah. So then, Marcus, and at that same time, what were you doing? I was doing hot shots. First, I was driving trucks. I was driving trucks. I started driving trucks for Luca because she, she didn't want me out there. Yeah. So she wanted me, like, doing some. Productive. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh so my first gig was uh what bison. I was driving trucks at bison for a little bit. Me and my partner, one of my partners, he got me on out there. We did that for I don't know a few months. And then I got me a dude. I started, you know, doing my own hot shot thing. And uh I started and I got got into the cars again. You know what I mean? The cars Surprise. really was like started doing financing. Uh I, you know, I was working at the back office doing financing at the at the car lots and stuff. And that kind of, I learned something different there. That kind of changed stuff, you know what I mean? And from there, I just been kind of dealing with banking and credit and stuff like that. Let's talk about your humble beginnings. Mm-hmm. Where you come from? I'm from Oak Cliff. What's your, what, what, what type of family did you come from? I come from a, a entrepreneur family. But <laughs> I mean, you know, I come from a family of, uh, Chance takers. Uh-huh. Chance yeah. takers. Who yeah, is your my, father? My dad, Esau. Speak. What, what what did Esau do for a living? He did uh, he had a few things. He had a funeral home, had a car lot, had gas stations. And you know, we sold he sold drugs. A big kingpin. He was known, known. Yeah, he was known. Yeah. He was no, known. No. He was known, known. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Yeah. He ain't said like we so we like if it was real real top, <laughs> if it was today we was legal. Wait, I, I mean, cause we didn't sell nothing but weed. We just sold a lot of it. You know, like 18 yeah, we Willis. We sold a lot of it. We yeah. saved Marcus 18 Willis? Yeah, 18 Willis. You know what I'm saying? We did. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I can talk about it now. You know, we did. We sold 18 Willis full. You know, I ain't gonna lie to you. But, you know, everybody thought we sold keys and this and that, but we just sold weed. Y'all sold that much of weed. Just, this, we that's how we sold. sold. 18 Willis full of weed. 18 Willis. Yeah, we had like. Warehouse is like full of weed. <laughs> Big box. Yeah, he laughed. So you, you grew up seeing a bunch of money. Yeah, a lot of life. money. That kind of my first million and nine. You said what? You counted? <laughs> Not mine. I'm I know. Saying, I have, I have you my dad. your daddy money. He had a million dollars. Yeah, he cash. told you to count it. I helped him count a million dollar cash at nine years old, yeah. 
What was that like to you to see that kind of money? And it was just cool. Any dude nothing to me, though. I was like, I'm, you was used I'm, to it. Yeah, it was, normal. Used it was a to secret, normal. Though. I knew it was a secret. Okay. You know, like, you know, like, we, my old man, he smoked weed. If he had, like, a a little seed on the table, friends would come over. I, you know, I, if I saw it before that. Oh, for real? Because I never wanted to lose my daddy. That's good. So I never would. You know, my old man was always known as, you know, a businessman. So I never, like, talked about nothing. No cash, no money, no nothing. But you was a kid going to school with the, the latest Jordans yeah. and everything else? No, not really. I wore Levine's. Really? <laughs> we did. My mom and dad, it was country. They weren't, no, my dad wore jewelry, not with jewelry. So, so you have that? But like, no, we wore Wranglers. You know, we wore like <laughs> Rossler jeans. You yeah, know, Russell's. we shopped in Levine's. I'm serious. Like, all the people that work for my dad and my mom and dad, all their kids dress way better than us. <laughs> That's how I found out about hair figure and polo. <laughs> from the other kids. From like, <laughs> yeah, seriously. From like the other kids. Like, I ain't know nothing about it. Like, no Jordans and stuff like that. We, you know, like one time, man, my mama went by with some XJ900. Oh, yeah, that's what I used to wear. And uh, I'm in the I'm in from the lunch line. Cashway. I mean, from Payless. But I thought, uh, this, I'm saying, this is how far I didn't know. I thought they were Jordans. Oh yeah, because they were lookalikes. Yeah, but I'm in the school line and, and <laughs> lunch, and I heard these kids in the background talking about he got them fake Jordans on. He got them fake Jordans. <laughs> so I turned around talking about who, who, who. You know what I'm saying? You, you. And the dude what walk, are those? And the dude walk up on me like, hey man, you know them fake, don't you? I'm like, you lying. <laughs> So you I go home. I, I go home. I'm like, Mom, these face. She's like, well, they I thought they were the same thing. <laughs> and my dad, he was like, but he was like, why you get them face off? So he took us that night though. <laughs> he took me to the mall and bought me some blue and white joint. That just came what? out. <laughs> I hit the school the next day. I was the only one in school with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So, so they didn't focus on clothing nah, like my that. My mom and dad, they, they dropped my day about cars and you know, gear and real estate. He didn't really, they wasn't, he didn't start dressing until I started dressing. <laughs> you talking about when you got older, like in high school? Older, my dad, that's when he started like wanting to dress up. You know what I'm saying? Dress nice. Yeah. And so you grew up seeing entrepreneurship from both sides of it because he had uh, uh, legit businesses as well mm -hmm. as illegitimate businesses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, but you watched him vacillate between both worlds. And how do you think that that framed your ideology when it came to money? When it came to money, yeah, like when you grew up, do you say I'm finna have money like this? I'm finna. I mean, I just I don't know. I ain't never. I ain't never felt like it was. Hard to get. You know, I always felt like if you know if it's you know you, sometimes it's it get rough, but you just got to just figure it out. And yeah, you, you'll figure it out. And so um, after you say all it took was one time to go to prison and you learned, uh, what did prison teach you? It's for dumb niggas. Excuse me. <laughs> no, you say <laughs> niggas. Remember my my most viral video was a girl wig falling off that said, "Oh my God, yeah. nigga." <laughs> so, yeah. It was it was it seemed like. I ain't gonna say I no disrespect to guys that's in prison. Yeah. It's cause some people only get one chance and get a lot of years. Yeah. But I but there's a lot of guys that go back and forth. They dumb to me. I they, went back and forth, you got nah, what they done. Nah, like, you, did. you didn't. You didn't though. Cause you, you know what I'm saying? You didn't. You you would still be going. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm done. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Be going. Nah, I'm saying like like it was cats that felt like that was like they lifestyle. Yeah, like yeah. The glory. Yeah. To go back and forth. I used to be like, nah, I mean, so once I get out, I ain't coming back. Because <laughs> it, cause it, was a, it was a white, I mean, uh, this white guy, he used to come and talk to the guys who first come into prison. I went I got, I went to prison in Mississippi. Mm. Now where they made a uh, life at. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, that's Same what I was at. Wow. Place. But uh, it was a white guy. He was cool. But he would come in and talk to all the guys. It would, it would be like about two, three hundred of us. You know, when we first come in, he was like, uh, "How many of y'all say y'all never come back to prison again?" Everybody raised their yeah. hand. He was like, "Only about ten of y'all tell the truth." And you look around, you like, "Dang, everybody else coming back." <laughs> God, I just be like, "Man, I ain't, I'm gonna be them ten. Yeah, I'm gonna be one of them ten. I'm gonna be one of them ten. I just I always just thought like that. I'm gonna be one of them ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it hard though when you when you t when you a lot of our brothers have been in and out of prison, and they feel like being a product of their own environment, they get institutionalized, where they come back home 
quote unquote with the right intentions, but because they can't find jobs, quote unquote, that's the Mm-mm. the reason why they say. Of course, no. we always say, no, you can find jobs, you do this, but that's what they say. And then they end up going back because they want that quick money or whatever it caused them to go to prison. They do the same thing, and then they think they're smarter now that they're not gonna get caught. Mm-hmm. Was did you did, were you faced with those challenges? You said yeah. you had some broke days. Yeah, so yeah. how did you function in those broke days, not doing what led you to go to prison? Man, I started reading. I read some books, and they changed my life. And by reading those books, I seen that it's not about a product. It's just about you, you know what I'm saying, what you believe you deserve. And, like, certain opportunities going to come in different ways. You kind of got to be like a lion that's sitting up under the tree waiting to hit a deer. You know what I'm saying? You're going to wait on a thousand deer to pass you by, or you going to just grab one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> going to grab you one and be like, let see what happens. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's kind of how, you know, like, I feel like God always feed us. Yeah. No matter what. So, you know, I, like, I don't think like that no more. Like, I got to go get a, a plug. I got to go get some dope. I got to yeah. go, go get some wings. Yep. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I yep. some waffles. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. For I can do the same thing. You know what I mean? Like you know, your weight just look different, huh? Yeah, exactly. just look different. Same, same, same hustle, different product. Yep, yeah. You know what I mean? And so, at what point after y'all met? How long did it? When you met her and y'all had that long talk in the car, were you thinking? Were you the type of guy that always wanted to get married, or were you like, I ain't really? I always wanted to be married. You did. Why? Because mm-hmm. my mom and dad were married. So you witnessed marriage at a young age and said that's what you wanted for yourself? I was little. I said I wanted to marry when I was 21. Really? I did. <laughs> How old were you when you met her? I'm 35, 34. We just turned 35 know. and got married. 30 something. 30. And so, 30, and so 30, how long 30, did it take you to realize that that's who you wanted as your wife? She got married, what, six months? <laughs> we got married, like. I mean, we married pretty much the day we met. Five months. We got married. Because we ain't never been apart. Yeah. We got, the day we, y'all met. We met in January, and we married in June. In June. And we, was, we wasn't apart <laughs> anywhere in between. We was together mm-hmm. every day. So Seriously. I guess he, I don't know. So, 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 so you knew that when you first met her? Nah, I would just like. Sometimes you can just start hanging out with people by default. Wasn't I mean, that, hey, I, I want this woman to be my wife? I don't know. I think I think it just kind of like it was crept like, up on you. Nah, <laughs> nah, it was, it was it was it was it was it was. Let me tell you what it was though. It was a guy. One guy got the apartment. Mm-hmm. We got the apartment, and the guy was like, uh, "Man, once you get married, your whole life gonna change." He was just talking to me. We was out talking, you know. He was married, and I was like, "Man, I really, I really believe that." Because at the time, we were struggling. Like, you know, she was doing her, selling purses. I'm towing cars, all kind of stuff. Cars get repoed. That was you? Yeah. Our, no, cars. our car. Our oh, y'all cars get repoed. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, we got Ford Focus. <laughs> Ford it's a Fusion. Yeah, Ford Fusion. <laughs> Those, what, $600 car note, though. So, yeah. so who had the car? Did y'all have one car y'all shared? No, nah, we had one we car. We shared it, We yes. shared it, yeah. Like, we really started from nothing, you know, like, and then it was like, you kind of appreciate that. 100%. You know I mean? Like a person that kind of take you through your bad times. Yes. And your good times, you know what I mean? So I like... Like with her, I could like kind of be like, you know, I fought, I could be anybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, that's be, real. You know, like, I could just be me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't got a hot side, like, hey, baby, we got to slow down, money gets, you know. Yeah. I ain't yeah. got to walk in here, like, you know what I'm saying? We just big boy, you know. Yeah. Or, you know, or whatever. even with the money, if it, you know, if we're gone and we got to figure out to get some more money, like, it ain't never been like, ah, oh, man, what is, you know, it's always been like, shit, we'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to figure it out. It's never been like a blame game. Or uh, it's like a I don't know, man. It's like a it's ain't it's real. <laughs> like it is. So six months later, you said, Hey, meet me at the altar in your white dress. How'd y'all get married? Did y'all get married at a courthouse? Wasn't that an official wedding or how was no, it? No, we got mm-hmm. married in his friend's backyard living room. Then we took no, the picture in the backyard. Yeah, we took the picture in the backyard by the tree. <laughs> by the tree. Yes, we it ate was just us. It they was cooked them us a two, breakfast. Him, his wife, and us two. Yeah, four they cooked us. Oh, is it four of y'all? Just the four of us. That's it. 
Man, they cooked us some breakfast. <laughs> he said they cooked us some breakfast. They said, did. Yeah. Who it was married really y'all? Good. My friend of mine named Pierre. He's a preacher. <laughs> yeah. He got a church. I don't know where I forgot the name of the church, but he got mm-hmm. his, him and his wife. They both preach, but uh, they married us, man. And uh, they fixed us some breakfast and everything. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps saying that breakfast. <laughs> said, that breakfast it was, was good. good. It was, it was real good. good. I remember the breakfast. It was good. And then it y'all went and took a picture in front of the tree. Front of the tree. We did. And, and that said, was it. I had a pink polo on. <laughs> and I had on a white dress. She had a white dress. <laughs> well, I remember. Yes. Yeah. So what did y'all think about each other then? Did y'all have people in y'all ear talking about y'all getting married too fast? Y'all don't know each other oh, like yeah. that? Oh, yeah. We did. How did y'all weather that? I mean, mm. we were so in love. Yeah. We was we was so in love in the beginning, in the mm-hmm. beginning of that relationship. We yeah. were just, yeah, we didn't care about yeah, anything. Yeah, true. You don't care what nobody said. No. Nah. Y'all said we with each other, and that's what it is. Yes. Yeah. And um, y'all were married for almost 10 years before yes. y'all. What caused the breakup? What caused the... And, you know, with marriage, it's a whole lot of stuff that can happen in those nine years. Mm -hmm. But where did y'all, at what point did y'all start feeling uh, adversity? So it was the ninth year. That was really, really hard for us. And I don't know, we was just arguing all the time over just simple. Stupid stuff. Small things that turned into huge, big, you know, fights. And... We, My honest opinion, I think it was egos. Egos. Because y'all making money at this point. Because yeah, yes. like, yeah, a lot has changed by now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talk about so, what has changed. What changed at this point? I mean, so zip codes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, being honest. Square footage. Yeah, everything. And I guess we kind of, at this point, we kind of feel like it was a competition. A competition. Between us. Yeah, yeah. And that's... that's what happened. So why? Yeah. What made it shift to a competition? Outside. I, I, I mean, personally... Listen to outsiders. What would they say? She make more money than you, or you make more money than her? That type of stuff. People trying to figure out. Who makes the most money? Who makes the most money, or who really carrying the weight. And I think that that, like, that kind of might, kind of made a rip between us. So at that point, ninth year, what were you doing? So I was doing hair. Um, we had the event center. Mm-hmm. We had the tax office, credit repair. What else? Cars. And the car, car sales. And then what were you doing? She just named all of them. <laughs> Everything uh, except the hair. All right. <laughs> he so, was doing so, all that except so, the hair. So why would, hair. this is what I understand. Why do people be in people's business like that? If y'all are a couple, it's y'all stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she just named, I asked, what was she doing? She named everything, everything that y'all that we were doing. doing you see what I'm saying? Because we did it all together. But you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I said, what were you doing? Right. And she named all these things. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, what were you doing? You said all of this. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we then, do it together. But then y'all allow somehow for people to say, She's doing this, you mm-hmm. doing this, she's making this money, you making this amount of money. And nobody, mm-hmm. how, how can anybody ever know? Because we right. like, because like, since we've been back together, it's been the best because we, we don't keep nobody in our business no more. There it is. And that's simple that as that. Is, like, keep everybody and that, And that was our, our rule, our thing. When we got yeah. back together, we was like, this time, like, nobody, nothing. Like, like what, if we argue, if we do this, or yeah. whatever. Anything. It's between it's us. Here. It's right here. Facts. And we've been mm-hmm. doing well. Been doing and so well. in that moment, ninth year, what caused it to really get to the point? What was the breaking point where it says, I have to leave, I'm going to relocate? What was that breaking point? Me was for him being jealous. And it was a night that we went out and he said that I was looking at some guys and we had a fight. And that for me, that was it. And that was it. Well, y'all went out where? Y'all was at a club or a restaurant or what we was it? We was this? at a a, a video release. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you said you was looking at a guy. And were y'all, was there any infidelity in the marriage at that point that made trust no. be broken on no. either one of y'all's part? No. Mm-hmm. And so what made you feel like that, Marcus? Man, the dude, I ain't gonna lie to you, though. <laughs> the dude, like... Man, dudes know. You know I what I'm know, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I ain't gonna say she was actually. He might have been looking at me, but yeah, I wasn't gonna say, at him. I, I feel like I ain't gonna lie to you. I feel like the dude was looking at her, and I and I don't know if she, you know if she kind of gave him an eye, let him know that he that she see him, and you know, and the kind of dude kind of got more confident. 
You know what I mean? And what so, did he do? He walked over there and talked to her? No, nah, he didn't do that. I see, look at him. Marcus nah, said, nah. Marcus, nah. Hey, you know, he had, a home, he had a partner with him, so they was just doing, you know. Marcus, 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 why would he do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, nah, it was more like, you know, Marcus, like, nah, he didn't do it that. was more of this. Like, you walk by and you just doing this. Yeah. To get them eyes. Yeah, catch the attention. Yeah, he was just trying to get me. He was just like, just a little bit too confident. And I, you know, I just didn't like it, but you know, and then that could, that could, that could, that could be my insecurities at the time. You know what I'm saying? I, could, I, ain't gonna, I mean, I'm, I'm big enough to. Admit I meant that. that, yeah. You know, but. <laughs> but what? <laughs> no, but <laughs> we <what>? know. <laughs> and so, and so you, you, you notice the guy look at her, but I don't trip about that. But I ain't you blame about that. her for like, it. Like I don't care about that. I got a beautiful woman. Like I really don't. I just don't. Honestly, God, truth. I just don't need her to let let her know, know that a dude can that that she see him. Yeah, and I didn't, but he. No, I'm saying like don't, let, don't you know even though he looking, don't let him know you see him looking. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like that's how like that's that be my hope. Or just grab you a little closer, kiss you, or do something to make Whatever, let him yeah. know. Yeah, but just let him know you know. Yeah, he ain't got no chance. Exactly. <laughs> you know what exactly. I'm saying? Facts. But you know it is what it is though. But like now, and that was the big blow up. And then you said yeah. I'm gonna leave. That wasn't the big blow up. It was just that. That was just the icing on the cake. Yeah, that was. It that was, was more it. to that than that. We was, you know, it was more stuff than that. But you know, like that was just a bad year. Were y'all doing mm-hmm. well that year financially? Yeah, we was doing all right. I mean, we, you know, it was it was it was cool. Yeah, we was staying prosper. You know, it was nice. Yeah, but it just that was just a bad year for us. Like it was yeah, like not I ain't gonna lie to you. It was it was just a power. It was all about power during that time. Yeah, I really feel like that. A straight power struggle. Yeah, it was like, it <laughs> yeah. wasn't me trying to make, like, <laughs> honestly, God, true, like, we never had a relationship where, you know, like, I run this, you run, you know, like, it was always been like, you know, it's, you know, we kind of, like, play, play our parts. But I don't know, for some reason, that year it was kind of like, you know, like, because I've never been the type of guy like, hey, I need a woman to go cook, clean, do this, that, other yeah. stuff. You know, she never been the type of woman gonna be like, hey, I need a man gonna pay this, do this, do this, yeah. do that. You know, like she ain't that type of woman either. You know what I mean? So it's like we kind of like just jail to where you like, like I make what she needs better, I do that, and what I need better, she do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we kind of mm-hmm. like it kind of works for us. You know what I'm saying? But, but that year it just that stopped year, working. It was it more of work. a, it was like a power thing. Real, you know, it didn't like, work yeah. that year. It was like you know trying to. I'm a big man. I'm a big woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Pleasant Grove. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Oak Cliff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm from Pleasant yeah, Grove. Yeah, I, I used to feel like, I used to be like, oh, she hate on me because I'm from the Cliffs. You know what I'm saying? So, Y'all ever set tripping? Yeah. In, in the, the house. <laughs> in the bed. Right here. You know, so, you know, it was, you know. It was just everything. Just yeah. everything. Yeah. So, what do you like, think it was, Harriet? I mean, it was a, a lot of what I said then. To like both of us feeling um, unappreciated, yep. you know what I'm saying? Taking each other for granted. Mm-hmm. Let's say that because now that we're back, we're able to look at all of the things we miss from the small things. Mm-hmm. You know, me picking up his dirty clothes in the bathroom after he get out the shower. Yep. A little, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Just everything for him cooking for me every day. Me not having to. You know, move a finger. He's cooking gourmet meals. Just all this, these little things that we missed and we took for granted before. You know, now we could look and say, yeah. "Man, so we dang, I appreciate all... you for all that." You know, I appreciate yeah, that. That's a big difference. Yeah. You don't see it like like it ain't about money. It's about like to help you get the money. You know, like your peace of mind. You know, you saying like you know, okay, I ain't got to worry about this. I know that that's automatically gonna be done. Yeah, and like with her, like I know I don't have to worry about certain things. She gonna automatically do it. You know, just like with me, she ain't gotta worry about this. He gonna do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, but when you lose one another, you are like now I gotta worry about all of this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dang, I gotta find yeah. something to eat. Yeah, you, you mean know I, what gotta, I gotta? Yeah, now I gotta clean up. You just said you have to worry about no food at nah, all. Nah, at so all. you gonna literally feed her every day. Yeah. He cook every day. Yeah, well, if I don't, if I don't cook, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure you gonna don't get out. some. Right, but he yeah. pretty much cooks every and like, day. She's gonna make sure the house is smelling good and clean and And y'all just and always smell. been like that. And, yeah. then, yes. and then it just stopped and y'all looked around like <laughs> This ain't what's yeah. up. 
<laughs> no, I mean, it's always been like that. But no. like I said, you know, we didn't appreciate that. You know, we didn't realize what we had until it was gone. It was gone. And then you able to look and say, man, yeah. he, he wasn't all that bad. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know? right. So that's kind of our situation. So when you seen her move to Atlanta, what did that do to you, King? It did. It did something. Especially with my kids down there. You know what I mean? At the time, I was... At the time, I was glad she was gone. I'm gonna be honest. Why? But I wanted my kid. You know, I mean, we was at that point where yeah. it was... You was like, please be gone. I need yeah. some peace. Yeah. Like, at the time, I was glad she was gone, but I wanted, you know... I didn't know she was gonna go to her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because she was going down the street. Yeah, I didn't know street. she was gonna go down with Atlanta. Go to you know what I'm saying? But you know, I can go to Arlington, not Atlanta. Mm-hmm. But it made us. Let it made us stronger, you. though. It made us strong. You said, let me show you. Was you yeah, doing that so as a point to show him? Yeah, I'm yeah, like, you know I'm finna, you know if I could go to, if I knew somebody in Alaska, Alaska, <laughs> Hawaii, I'd have went there just to yeah. show Around him. Around the corner wasn't you know, good enough. You know, you do stuff to show people. Let me yeah. show him. I could go to the moon yeah. and be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, we, both, we both was okay, though. Yeah. <laughs> we but both we was fine. Right. Yeah, we was no, okay, fake okay. Oh, man, it was terrible. It was. I mean, you know, you know how you think you want something? And then when you get it, you like, woo. <laughs> you know, Ooh. Maybe that was what I wanted, you know what I'm saying? You know, that I could, that was you know, that's how it was, you know. Yeah. It was like, you know, it was like <laughs> what did I do? Yeah, like man, I really, you know. Like, you know, so like when she came back to Dallas, it was it was really good. You know, like everything that happened in the midst of all this, like it's weird. But like even with our new restaurant, like the stuff that she had to go to Atlanta. To this, learn. To learn some stuff <laughs> yeah. like that I need to learn. And like for her, she she needs to go away for me to find out some stuff that I need to learn. And once we brought it all back together, now we got Gorilla Nuts. Like I'm serious, like it's a trip. You know what I'm saying? So Gorilla Nuts is their new restaurant that they have yes. together. Um, and they are known for these strawberry. See, one thing I'm mad at y'all, I got a bone to pick with y'all, literally, because right. y'all could have came with some, with some wings or something. I should have. Yeah. But, yeah, you like are you right. Said, you talk but about these strawberry what? wings, right? Yeah. If we hadn't split up, that would have never came, huh? That would never came. Isn't that crazy? Nah, yeah. That's why I look at. I, I always say that everything apart. is in divine order. Like everything happens for you, not you know, it happens not to you, but for you. you know yeah. I mean? Like everything we went through. I'm being honest, though, man. It's like. <laughs> It was like we had to do that. So how did y'all give each other grace? You may have couples right now that may be <laughs> separated. Uh, the guy's dating some other woman. She's dating some other guy. How did y'all find grace for each other not to let egos get involved with, you know, you done had this woman and you done had this. How did y'all find grace to put all that aside and be able to say, forget what we did in the interim that, you know, we locking in again? Because you, you've been gone. I've been gone a year. We've been mm-hmm. away from each other a year. You done did some things, and I've done some things as well, right. period. Mm-hmm. So if we're going to be together, we already know we can't keep going back, going right. up old things, because that's can't not going to work. can't worry about nothing you can't change. Period. Facts. We can't change none of that. Facts. Can't worry about All that. we can do is move on. We can't yeah, even worry about... That's the worst about... thing you can do. <laughs> Right. It's focus on something you can't change. <laughs> the worst. And keep no, arguing about yeah, every day. Go crazy. Every day. Yeah, you're going to go crazy. You can't change it. It is what it is. It is, yeah. yeah. So that's. No, you can't. You can't. Like, if you really love each other, which yeah. we do, we're going to put all that, you know, to the back behind us like yep. it never happened. Play forward. like it never happened. Like Jesus say, it's too much money in front of us. <laughs> that's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus say. It's too much money in front of me to worry about this. <laughs> <laughs> what about that BS behind it? Move forward. That's, that's did y'all go through counseling individually or collectively? We did. We, we have. went during our marriage. Our marriage. It did they not work. Why we got it, divorced. Didn't, it didn't work for us. <laughs> I was say, why counselors, why y'all got divorced? Yeah, I think we scared that lady. Like yeah. we was right. Okay, we got into a real bad we was, yeah. In there, oh my, it was it terrible. Was, it was. You see, I scared the it lady. Was, we, I think we scared yeah. the lady. She didn't want us to come. She was like, then we tried. Then we tried some friends. <laughs> And we they really sabotaging us, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what they do, what they say. Man, it was just weird, man. Same people to murder us. You know? it, was, it was just weird, you know. So, so we left that alone. Yeah. You said they sabotage y'all? I ain't going to say that because we was already <laughs> messed up. We was yeah. already going through it, yes. you know what I'm saying? But I think they just. Did, did anybody ever tell y'all the best option? On did anybody ever tell y'all that the best option is to get a divorce? I think that's what we just said on our own, though. You know what I really think, though? I felt like 
the divorce made it like, all right, we 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 it's over. We out each other life. You know what I mean? But that is that really? You know, like it made it seem like I don't know. Like with to me, it was like it was like uh, like finalizing the chapter. Yeah. But then it was like. It was like, you know, like... You really don't want it to end. Nah, right? you really don't. Because it was like, now nah, it's like, damn, we ain't got nothing to hold on to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We Except got the kids. kids. Except yeah. the kids. Yeah, it was, how many um, kids y'all have together? Two. Y'all have two together. How many total? Mason, eight. Eight. Y'all have eight kids together. Eight grandkids. And eight grandkids. Eight grandkids. Mm-hmm. So break it up. How does how these eight kids divvied up? Okay. So. I got six of my own. All right, you have six of your own. And two together. And two together. Yeah, and I have four. So mm-hmm. two so of those both. <laughs> she got two two by herself. Huh? How's that okay, then? so I had I already I came with two. Right. Right. And he came with four. Four. Okay. And, and then together. we had two together. Okay, because he said six. He said he came with six. <laughs> yeah, I got six. And I got two yeah, with her. Two of her. Yeah. 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 And she had two already. Mm-hmm. And then y'all have eight grandkids. Yes. Yeah. What are the ages of y'all's kids from the youngest? Just say the youngest kid is this age and the oldest one is what age? The youngest Between the two is of y'all. Seven, seven and the oldest is 25. And 25. Mm-hmm. And so how did your kids deal with that divorce? They hated it, but they were still tight. Yeah. So your kids stayed together. They the was kids like, we, like we, hey, we're mm-hmm. not going to let our parents <laughs> break separate us, us up and separate mm-hmm. us. Yeah, we still, still brothers tight. and sisters. So yeah. 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 How they feel that y'all back together? They're happy. All yeah, of them. Right now, my They're grandkids, happy. everybody, you know, I'm in one house. You know, like it's it's us. You know, it's what we created. You know. Are they all yeah. still live there? No, I'm saying like like oh, me, no, you know, the no, older ones. No, no, but, you know, they have their own place. The older one, twenty five. Yeah, our kids got their own place to stay, but we got yeah. a house full. Like as far as I like, got grandkids, you know, every weekend, they come over, it, yeah. you know, the house stay pretty live. <laughs> So how do y'all feel having come through all that and now y'all are back together? Y'all only spent, what, a year and three months apart? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how do you feel that y'all are back together? I feel stronger than ever. Do you think y'all ever yes. go through that foolishness again and walk away from each other? I hope not. No. Is there, is there, like, in your mind, when y'all got back together, did y'all deal with whatever it was that caused the divide and said, listen... We finna rock it till we in rocking chairs. Yes. Like and we're like yes. this is it. I've already ta- I already tasted and seen. Exactly. This, 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 my exactly. life is nothing without you. Yes. Yeah. And we don't want to do that again. It's like the biggest your biggest fear is to lose a person. So we already went through that. Yes. Right. We yep. already seen how that felt. You know, Felt her like being with somebody else and me being with somebody else. And like watching we, each other deal with yeah, that. Yeah, watching it too. You know, like yeah. we actually seen that and felt that. So it's like it really ain't nothing else. That can, Answer that then, Marcus. How'd you feel seeing her with somebody else? He was trash. <laughs> <laughs> he was sad, oh, I want a million me. people to hear that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, it, was a, it wasn't a step down. It was like 10 steps down. <laughs> Marcus, it was 10 steps down? Yeah, man. All right. Harry, shots fired. Ditto. Uh, how, how, was, how, how, was, how was the girl? Ditto. Did, <laughs> That's it. Times 20. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> yeah, I ain't even no hater. I'm just see speaking facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Me too. And, and so, and so, how was, was it hard for y'all to co-parent in that situation? Were y'all still on talking terms? Yeah, it was still we cool. were. Yes, we yeah, were. It was still cool. And it, and you know, it never took away from him being a wonderful dad. Period. Good. And people mm-hmm. like, why are you gonna send the kids Good, down Marcus. there? And I was like, he loved his kids. Good, Marcus. He's, that's one reason why I chose to be with him in the beginning because I saw how he was with his kids. Marcus, mm. bro, I salute you. Appreciate because it. at the end of the day, uh, dang, I'm about to get choked up. <clears throat> <sighs> at the end of the day, you can't control oftentimes a woman leaving you or whatever mm-hmm. happens in that situation. Sometimes marriages don't work. I want every marriage to work that's healthy. But even if the marriage doesn't work, those kids should not suffer from the parenthood of it. Right. And sometimes you got to work extra hard for it extra because hard. you're all long distance and putting kids on planes mm-hmm. and all that and working out a different visitation schedule. But for her to be able to salute you and say, listen, it didn't, we didn't work as husband and wife, but he's a doggone good father. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to have uh, or alienate my kids, our kids, because sometimes women start talking about it's my kids. No, okay, <laughs> did you have a kid by yourself? Mm-hmm. No, our kids, they need both parents. And the fact that she said that as a man, she said, no, 
But then that's crazy because, like you said, people are being your ear talking about, why are you going to send him to? Yeah. It's his kid. Why are you sending? Mm-hmm. Exactly. You're talking about why I'm going to send it's his, his kid, kid to him. and I'm tired. Mm-hmm. <laughs> get him. Get, get both of them. Get both of them. I lost my weed. <laughs> get both of them today. <laughs> today. And tell me when you want to bring them back. Keep they, as long as you want. Yes, <laughs> they belong to him. Why would I, why would I deny him? <laughs> and, so, and so when you look at that whole situation that y'all have come back together and the kids are happy now. Now the kids are thriving. You also said that y'all, not only are y'all so intentional with a do-over, but y'all have even left the house that y'all had before and starting over in a new house. Why mm-hmm. was that important? Just a new beginning, new mm-hmm. start. Um, and this house is our dream house, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Marcus, how many square footage? How many, how, what's the square footage? A little over 6,000. <laughs> Not that big. <laughs> he thought it ain't that big. So this is y'all dream home. Y'all gonna y'all it gonna stay our, here for a minute. It is our forever. Yeah, it's our forever home. home. Yes. Yeah. Did y'all was it something that y'all already built? Y'all were building it or something that y'all yeah, y'all about? No. no it's just like, when we got back together, we was looking, we was renting at the time mm-hmm. and looking for something to buy. So we just came across this um one Sunday and oh my God. You ever you ever had a journal? <laughs> yeah. You know, you write down what you want. You draw what you want. I, I, you know, draw who you want with you. <laughs> there it is. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, see yeah. It. And, like, it's here. And you saw that, and you said, this thing is what I prayed for, what I asked for, what I journaled about. Man, if I show you the picture of it, it's, it's, it's built like a dude don't know how to draw. I mean, you know, <laughs> but it's yeah. a nice house, but, yeah. you know, it's just... But, yeah. And so... Y'all got this house, not even married yet. No. <laughs> so, yeah. so, and when? Start a business. Everything. Start a whole business. Got a whole business. We got a house. house. Ain't even married yet. Yeah. No. Well, we, we, we really are, though. I, really, I mean, you know, the, it, divorce is paper. We, I got to get her, her paperwork to make her feel, you know. <laughs> but I really like, like the divorce was more or less just, just really like, what you call, you know how she went to Atlanta? Yeah. <laughs> Let me give you your it's like, let me give you your, it was like, I'm going to show you. You know what I'm saying? It was, that's really oh, how you that. filed for the Now, she filed, <laughs> but I finalized it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she I filed. I didn't want to finalize it. She didn't want to finalize it. Oh, you didn't? It. Nah. Oh, so you filed, but you didn't. Tr- you didn't. You, you yeah. was going we, went, we went to the courthouse. I walked out. I was she crying. I couldn't even do it. I but I even. went in. <laughs> I told her, like, man, she went back to Atlanta. <laughs> and he just went on and like, what's your girl? <laughs> I went on and gave my divorce, you know what I'm saying? I walked up by myself, you know what I'm saying? And then I, I, we lied. I'm just going to keep our way with Yeah, ready. yeah. We well, lied about a month, about two months, because she was going to come back to Atlanta to finalize it, right? <laughs> and I was like, she was like, well, you know, I'm going to come back this day. We talked. I said, man, I'm going to keep 100. You ain't got to come back. You know? it's, it's already it's done. It's already done. We divorced. And then it was like, damn, hey, it's real. You know, because I, I was like, really I lying. Was I didn't want y'all to know it was real yet. You know what I mean? Because I didn't know, you know, like I tell you, it was more of a less like, since you in Atlanta, I'm going to go on the show. Yeah. Now. But. What did you think when you found out it was real, that he, he really divorced? I was heartbroken. I was like, oh, my God, he really did it. He really divorced me. Yeah, and I, Even I, I couldn't I believe I did it. <laughs> Cause she filed, you know I know what I'm it. But she, ain't, you know, she ain't want to do it. But it was, it was like a, you was like, are oh, you gonna leave me? I got something to show was, you. Yeah, I'm gonna show you. Like, yeah, we are gonna really gonna do it, dude. You know. But you know, I'm glad. Like now, all the stuff that we went through, man, and like it, we here. What is here? When you like, say we're here, I want y'all in the both, present. I know I want yeah. y'all both to tell me what here means to you, because you keep saying that. And that's a powerful yeah. statement. So from you, Marcus, what is here? Like I'm really living my dream. You know what I mean? Like I got my kids, my wife with me. We working together. You know, building a business together. We, you know, got my grandkids together. You know, like you know, I'm here now. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm really living my dream. Harriet, what is here? Um, here for me is just at peace and where you mm-hmm. want to be. That's here. That's powerful. What do y'all look forward to the most as y'all continue to build legacy with each other? Y'all are business partners with each other. Um, y'all are purpose partners. I always say that 
one of the things I said, you can marry people, and that can be your wife or husband. And I said, yes, I'll have that, but what I'm more interested in is my purpose partner. When you listen, and when you listen the way y'all talk about each other, y'all are needed to fulfill each other's purpose. Like he said, I wouldn't have had strawberry wings if it wasn't for her going to Atlanta. Explain mm -hmm. that, because you, you you mentioned it, but people may not know what that means. No, I'm saying like, like you have a dream, right? You know, you see it, you know, but you know what they say? Like, if God told you what you had to go through to get to, you probably, I don't want, I don't want none of that. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you really believe in your dream and you stick to it, you stay with it. And like, when I'm saying, like, when I said, like, she had to go to Atlanta, we had to split up. We had to do all that to, to get to there, you know what I'm saying? To get to where we at now. Right. And that's what I mean by that. Like, you know, sometimes you just got to really believe that it's all gonna work out for the greatest good, you know what I'm saying? For the you know, for the better good of you. you know yeah. What I mean? And it and it will. And then how know. these strawberry wings come to come to uh She be? ate her. She probably went on a date in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> You know I did not go on a date. I'm high side, you know, I'm high side. I went in the I'm middle of the side. day while the kids was at school. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a place down there that sold strawberry wings, and it was really good. So when I came home, I was like, you need to try them. They was real good. Just go buy some stuff. And make it up. <laughs> Man, it was in the kitchen. You was, was in the cooking. Man, it was in the kitchen like, <laughs> <laughs> like, try this, baby. No, nope, she not really, it. she's really picky. I oh, really her picky. So like the whole menu, you know, it's like she tasted it. You know what I mean? If she says it's good, it's good. It's good. Cause she picky, so super picky. picky. You know what I mean? She's not gonna eat. You know, she's she gonna, mm -mm. you know, she gonna tell you. <laughs> you know, so like, you know, that's but still a taste tester. You know what I mean? you know what I'm and I'm going to let him know. Yeah, he go know. back to the drawing board. Yeah. Like and so you would always encourage him throughout the years. To, did you ever encourage him to open up a restaurant? Is that where y'all got the first food truck from? Or? So we, um, like I said, he's been cooking forever. And he, we've had the idea of a restaurant about, what, five years ago maybe? Yes, yeah, but it was time. just something that we talked about. We jotted mm -hmm. down, you know, a few ideas. So while I was away, we was away from each other, he bought a food truck while he was with, the girl, and uh, who's he with? The, the girl. girl. <laughs> so he was with, leave it at that. The girl. <laughs> so he was over there. He had bought a food truck. <laughs> so we got back together. I was like, "Well, what are you doing with the food truck?" I don't know. I want to do something. You know, mm. he didn't. He didn't really know. And I was like, "Well, why won't we? You know, open up and sell some food?" <laughs> He's no. like, "Okay, well, what we gonna sell?" <laughs> He was like, yep. okay, this is what we're going to sell. And I started writing down, wrote down the menu, mm -hmm. and here we are. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, that's the, the – uh, <laughs> I love it when couples work. You know what I'm saying? It's like I always believe this. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, I just truly believe this. When you're married to the right person, they're literally the missing puzzle piece. Mm -hmm. It's like you cannot do it with that other person. I right. really believe mm -hmm. that. And people always say, I nah, I'm my own man. I can make stuff happen. That level that you can't make happen, you need her need for it. Yeah. You got to. You got I, to. I, I'm telling you, I believe that to the core of my soul. And the same thing for her. What she needs is you. It's mm -hmm. like she can go do 10,000 so ins or whatnot. Right. But for the other part that's missing that she don't even know that she needs, you come right. and you go, hey, baby, why don't you try this? Why don't you do this? Let's right. open up another shop. You working too hard. Mm -hmm. You away from the kids so much. What if we open this? You get some other people working right. for you. You're like, right. oh, yeah. Oh, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. Because that's the other side of you yeah. that begins to think on your behalf. And that's why I get so excited to talk to people like y'all is to say, listen, We've been through all this stuff. Right. It worked. Then we self-sabotage our own marriage based upon you whatever. Self-sabotage. Self -sabotage. You said You sit back and be like, because sometimes stuff can be working so good that it don't work. You be mm -hmm. like, yeah. you know what, something, I don't know about <laughs> something. Right. You be like, what? Something, something don't feel right. If something don't feel right. I'm telling too good you, to be true. Too yeah. good to be true. Listen, yeah. I've talked to people who, I've talked to women who said that they've ended their relationship because it was too normal. And you said at the very too beginning, normal. you said that you boring. I'm boring. You boring. You can get with a toxic woman and she will find you like, you, you why, why, mm -hmm. why you ain't like, I need mm -hmm. to be able to check your phone. What's going on? Mm -hmm. You be like, well, here's my phone. Why are you giving your phone so easy? Yeah. You be like, yeah. Yeah. Because I ain't got nothing to hide. Oh, you hide something. Where's another phone? I bet you got another phone. Yeah. Here's my yeah. other phone. Oh, you, be like, you be like, here's my other phone. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's another phone that you hide. Mm -hmm. 
That's my only two phones. <laughs> so why'd you give it to me so quickly? You know what the problem mm. is? You probably got in this and you just be like, I don't know what's wrong with this person. <laughs> because they're so used to toxicity right. that normal relationships are too boring and it has to be something wrong. So we mm -hmm. sabotage it by creating issues that's not even there. Mm -hmm. And so what's so crazy about it is that I love the fact that y'all been able to weather through all this foolishness in order to get to a place where y'all say we locked in. We locked mm -hmm. in. We are here forever. We got our forever home. Yeah. We got these businesses that we're starting. What other business y'all got now? Is it just consolidated to this one business? So we have that. That's that's our main focus. That's our baby. And then starting our nonprofit, mm -hmm. which is Furnished Futures, where um, just say getting yesterday. out of prison or getting out of a shelter, getting back on your feet, got your first apartment. We donate furniture and we decorate it. So that's what that is. Mm -hmm. That's what y'all going to be doing? Y'all already got yes. that? We did one yesterday. Yes. Yeah. For real? Yeah. I just got out of Took prison yesterday. Medicine. Can y'all come furnish my new home? <laughs> you don't need anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> y'all come furnish my home. I just got me. <laughs> That's good. What made y'all decide to do that? Of course, it's kind of obvious, but what made y'all decide to do that? Of course, you know, my sister Nikki Watson and yeah. her... Um, design quad. Her design quad. And I've been wanting to do something. I've been wanting to give back for a long time. Talk to him all the time about it. So I'm like, what can I do? Mm -hmm. What can I do? So this this is it. So you know what? I'm gonna challenge y'all on this. This is cool because this just came up where I have a friend that has this uh this girl's home and I got a call the other day where just last week and they were saying that I wanna design the media room for the girls for foster home. Mm -hmm. And so if that, uh I would love for y'all to look at that and see if y'all wanna design Absolutely. that the girls' home for mm -hmm. these foster kids, because mm -hmm. that'd be Fun. right up y'all alley and that'd Definitely. be so dope. So that'd be dope. I'll plug y'all with the content, uh, mm -hmm. contact. What okay. is something that you would like to say as far as um, the naysayers, the people that may wonder or question um, why y'all still together, why y'all got back together and all this type of stuff? Um, and it's even if y'all have those people around, what would you say to them? Let me go so first. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say, like, aggressive. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> That's, That's my grandson would say. Nobody, nobody cares. cares. Oh my God. I love it. Nobody cares. Nobody, nobody cares. cares. Hashtag. Yeah. Um, what would I say? Let me ask you this. Do y'all have people that be like, oh yeah, we don't have. Yes. Do they tell you they tell y'all that? Or do you uh, that's how we ain't got no friends. <laughs> Because, you know, the truth came out, you know what I mean? It was like, once we started back talking, they really showed their true colors, like, you know. Yeah, so. Yeah. I truly, I don't have any words. I don't have any words. No words. Yeah, nobody care. <laughs> no words. I mean that. I don't, nobody cares. <laughs> Which is good. And the reality is that, is the mm. fact that God never said you need everybody's opinion to be married. No. Mm -mm. And if you take too many people's opinions in something, it will never work. I mean, yours don't matter. At all. And yeah. the reality is that when you think about, um, we were never meant to consume this amount of, um, this, like, you look at social media. If you have, let's say you only have 500 followers. And if you get a Tenth of those commenting, saying something negative. We wasn't built to consume 50 negative comments every day. Like, yeah. that, that'll send you right. off over the edge. You know what I'm saying? We never were yeah, meant person. to get that many people's opinion on stuff. Mm -hmm. But we consume these opinions on a daily, and even in our personal lives, nobody ain't helping y'all pay y'all bills. Right. <laughs> nobody ain't helping y'all. I'm quite sure when y'all lay down and have sex, y'all not taking instructions from other people. Mm -hmm. Hey, I need you, Marcus, to lay like this with her. <laughs> Harry, I need you to do this. Nobody tell y'all that. You know what I'm saying? You know, nothing. nobody's <laughs> telling you how to have an orgasm, how to please a body, <laughs> but then they feel like they have a right to tell you whether or not y'all should be married or not. Right. Like, ain't that crazy? Yeah. That's so and that's crazy. why I say we got to stay out of people's business. Listen, I enjoyed y'all so much. This Thank episode is going to be titled us. Spin the Block. Spin the Block. Spin the Block. Spin the block. Uh, whenever y'all have this, um, well, I ain't going to say vow renewal. This would be a remarriage. Mm -hmm. uh, when y'all have this remarriage, <laughs> can I get an invitation? Yeah, I don't absolutely. care if there's eight people there. I want to be <laughs> yes. one of them. I got to I gotta be in the house yeah, so I can salute y'all, uh, do a prayer over y'all so mm -hmm. this time around is 10 times better. Yes. And see, the Bible says that where two or more are gathered in his name, there shall he be in the midst. So I don't mm -hmm. know what y'all's faith level was the first go around, mm -hmm. but I encourage y'all to infuse a whole lot of Jesus in that thing the second mm -hmm. time 
around mm-hmm. so that he'll build something when he says, well, he has joined together, let no man put asunder, not even Harriet, not even Marcus can put mm-hmm. that thing asunder, which means tear that thing apart. Mm-hmm. So, hey, y'all give it up for my people. I'm going to put a link to their restaurant um, in the description. And so everybody in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and, and, uh, and around, make sure y'all go out and patronize my friends. Uh, y'all give it up for the speed, y'all. Thank you. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care, should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, Our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTaris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, I really enjoy this episode, talking to the speeds. I love when people keep it lit. You know the moniker is we live intensely and transparently. And so I love that the speeds just kept it 1,000. I love when I meet transparent people. So 
Hopefully you found value in this episode. It added a little wrinkle in your brain to let you know that love comes with a little bit of complications that as we go through this journey that we have to be committed to making it work. And so I just love it. Anyway, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, as I pen these words, I'm drawn to the metaphorical canvas of life where storms brew and winds whip fiercely. In the tapestry of our shared existence, I see not just the sunny days, but also the tempest that will challenge us. Know this, my love, when the skies darken and the thunder roars, I am your unwavering anchor. In the tumultuous sea of uncertainties, we'll navigate hand in hand, our love, an unyielding lighthouse guiding us through the turbulence. Our journey won't be defined by the storms, but refined by them. In the face of adversity, we'll stand resilient, finding strength in each other. Let our love be the sanctuary amid chaos, a haven where vulnerability is embraced and authenticity reigns. As raindrops cascade, let's dance with joy, unafraid of getting wet. For every storm we weather will be a chapter in our story, a testament to the depth and endurance of our connection. So my dearest future wifey, let's not just weather the storms, let's revel in the beauty of our love, strengthened by each challenge. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.